In today's show, we're going to talk about how to read an NFC tag with Power Apps. That's right, we're going to put these little stickers on some of our stuff and we're going to add it to an inventory app. So we're going to show you how to scan the tag. And then once we scan the tag, we're going to look up the data and then take you to an asset inventory item where you can check out that item. So should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to read NFC tags with Power Apps. Why? Because it seems like fun. And so if you've never used NFC tags, right, they're on all types of things you buy. You probably never noticed them. They're little, little circles, little metal lines in them. They have a little bit of memory on them so they can have some text or other things encoded on them. And where they're really interesting is, you know, like we've talked about barcode scanning in the past, but with barcodes, they get, have a hard time in dusty, dirty environments or places where they get rubbed and touched a lot. You know, a barcode's only as good as how clear the, the actual label is. Whereas with NFC tags, you know, because they are, I don't know, near field communication, it, it uses electricity and magic. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but you can just scan the tag and it works. And so that way it works better where you don't have all the visibility or it's a little roughed up. The other uh, good thing to know about these NFC tags that we dive in is just your good old cell phone, right? It has an NFC tag reader built in. So that's what we're going to demo from today. So we don't need any complicated extra devices. We can just use mobile phones to read these tags. All right, that's enough blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop. Or no, let's switch over to my phone and do a quick demo of the app before we learn how this works. All right, so in theory, we are on my phone, right? I've made this cute little mobile app. You know, nothing complicated other than it's got a cute picture of Chewy. And so here you can see, like, I've got a button at the top for scan and go. So if we press scan and go, and so then here is my thing. You can see I put a little NFC sticker on the bottom. And if I just kind of rub my phone up here against the bottom of it, there my phone vibrated. You see the dots where it's doing look up and it's, I'm taken to the checkout screen Ta -da! where I can check out that item. I go back. We say scan and go again. There's a sticker on the bottom of this guy. Same deal. I got to get it in the right spot. There it goes. And here it goes. And we should be able to check out Chewy's. If they ever show up, there they are. And that's it, right? So we're going to walk through how to make this. Now, the first couple of things you need to know is that these little NFLs, NFL, NFL, I'm probably going to get sued for saying their name, NFC, not to be confused with the NFL, or NFTs, non-fungible token, I don't know. Anyway, NFC tags, um, I bought a set of these off of Amazon for like $5. I bought like 10. And so you can use any third-party tool to read or write those. And so while Power Apps can read them, which is what we're doing here, um, if you want to write them, I had to download some other app. Um, I just went to the App Store and typed in NFC Writer and found some app made by someone. I don't even know who it was. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind that you will need a way to write the tags. Also, I went with the cheapest tags possible because once this demo is over, I'm never going to use them again. Uh, but you guys might, if you're really going to invest in this, you probably want to go and learn more about NFC tags and, you know, the size of the memory on them, what you can read them and write them, how well they work. You know, you probably don't want the cheapest ones out there. But if you just want to play, you want to inventory stuff in your house, then I'll leave a link below to the cheap ones I used. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's switch over to Power Apps now on my desktop and talk about how that actually works. So over here, what you're going to see is that there is, um, let's just start with the basics. Let's start with a blank screen. So over here, uh, what we want to do is we're just going to insert a button. And so in order to read NFCs, uh, there is a function. So it's called NFC, uh, read NFC, just like that. And so that returns the record of the information that comes back. So it doesn't work or do anything without a little help. So what you're always going to want to do is do something like set var my NFC tag to the output of that. And so now when you scan an NFC tag, whatever comes back from that NFC tag will be returned into this variable var my NFC tag, which is a record variable. And so then you're like, well, what's in the record variable? I didn't know either. So I went here to var my NFC tag and you can do a dot. And so there's four fields that come back. There is an RTD, a text, a TNF and a URI. I have been so far putting everything in the text and I'll show you in just a second. But what I was doing was I was putting in just the ID of it, right? So Chewy is ID one and Pac-Man here was ID two and the ghost is ID three and the real Chewy, wherever he is, he's not here today. He's ID four. So 
I was just storing the ID in the text field of these because I thought that was easiest. But if you're using RF uh, IDs, or no, I don't have IDs. If you're using NFC tags that have been done, uh, created by someone else, you're gonna see different data in these different fields. So, and I'm not an NFC expert. I tried, I looked up and read like what is RTD and TNF and URI, and basically was confused more, quite frankly. So I didn't, um, I didn't overthink any of them. But since we have these, so if you want to see the tag that comes back, you do text or et cetera. And so what I've already done is I've created a screen over here called read raw data. And so if we go use that on my app, let's switch back over to my phone just for one second. All right, so back over here, I had a raw data. And so if I click on raw data, and so then if I say read NFC tag, this will invoke that function. And then if I scan Pac-Man here, there we go. You, so you can see it returns the text of two, which is the ID of Pac-Man, RTD, which I think is like a type that tells you what type of tag it is. It's a T for text, TNF1, I have no idea what that is. And then there's no URI field. So that's the raw data coming back. And unfortunately, I could not find a single thing in my house with NFC tags. So I could see like what a pre-formatted one looked like. I know like some of the video games have them, things like that. But I was just able to use um, a little, that writer tool to write this data myself. And here, I'll just kind of show you that real quick. So this was the tool that I used. And so I just went in here and I said plus, and then let's just try web link. So web link, and then we'll just do a training dot power apps 911.com like so and we'll say save and we'll get off the text field and then we'll just do that and so then let me grab a blank one real quick where my blank one go right there we'll say write and boom it writes writing was successful right so i just held this little tag back here and then the spot is about right there oh and see so i scanned it on my phone and my phone's like open an edge let's try it and look at that, so it just works without me even doing anything. And if we go back over to our Power App, and I say read NFC tag. So there you go, so you can see RTD is U, TNF is one, whatever that means, and then URI is the URL. So that's how it knows what to do with that particular tag. Kinda cool. Um, but yeah, so as you're messing around with those, you know, just go, go play, that's the best way to learn this stuff. Go stick it on there, give it a go. Um, looking at the app again real quick, just to kind of show you. So you've seen Scan and Go. On, one of the downsides is there's no there's no NFC tag reader on my desktop, so there's no way to uh, test this from there. So I had to test all this by saving and publishing to my phone to do it. But then I also went over here and I just recreated a browse screen. And so this looks pretty familiar, hopefully. You can see I also put the IDs over here so I could make sure that I knew which IDs each one of these would be so that when I was making tags, I knew. And so then here I can go into um, any of the checkout screens. So let's go to Pac-Man Toy 2. And so then the checkout screen, right? And this was the whole sign. So I could have signed over there with my phone. And I'll borrow that one. And if we go back to home here and say view borrowed items, you can see the different things that I've borrowed, when they're due back, et cetera, et cetera. And this whole inventory app, remember we made a desktop version of this just a uh, couple months ago. Hey, hang on a second, I'll open it. And so it's using all the same data. And I really just kind of stole the same exact design and functions and all that, so I didn't have to rethink it. So if you're wondering how any of this works, right? It, it's slightly different. I did everything on two screens versus one, which is something I like to talk about with customers, right? Like when I build the same exact app on mobile versus on desktop, they have a different flair to them. You know, there's less information in one. Maybe I do things in two screens instead of one like this. This is where, you know, instead of building a responsive app, I like to make two apps because each app has a different flavor um, here, but, but you can do responsive as well. So anyway, hopefully that gives you guys an idea. This read NFC function, there's not a lot to it, right? It is just as simple as a button and set the variable to read NFC. Once you've got that, you're off and running. I guess some of you are probably wondering, well, Shane, how'd you scan and go? That's fair. So here, here's the scan and go button. So I set var NFC to the read NFC output, and I set var record to look up where shared equipment ID equals nfc.txt, remember that's where I was storing the one, the two, the three, the four, turning it into a value, so number equals number. And I said, if it is not blank, so if var record two didn't come back blank, that means I found something, everything was successful, then I reset my timer for the, um, the signature problem, and then I navigate, and then if is, 
if it's blank var NFC text, you know, so then these are my different error messages for the different uh, error scenarios. So also keep in mind, you can download this whole app. If you go to training.powerapps911.com and sign up for the curated library, you can download this and all my other apps. So if you just want this working read NFC app with all this cute functionality, because you probably don't want to manage toys, you probably want to manage actual physical assets. Totally get that. You can download uh, all of that. So cool. I think that's everything I've got for today. Not a very long video, but you know, why not a lot of new stuff to show here. I was just really applying this one little new concept. So if you have any questions, comments, ideas, things you want to see me do in the future, leave them below. I try to keep up with all my comments. I'm woefully behind right now. I get thousands and I'm just, I just can't keep up anymore, but I try. So leave comments and hopefully I see yours. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.